Well, welcome to Emerald Hill Skies. Uh, we are broadcasting from the outskirts of Louisville, Kentucky, uh, in a, a little spot that our nonprofit owns called Emerald Hills. And so it's Emerald Hill Skies. And uh, boy, it's a beautiful night. There is a little bit of wind, but the moon is not up yet. It's just uh, quiet and calm and black, just pitch dark. And uh, I see Robert, you're on. That must mean that you're up. Let's see, remind me, is it 2.30 a.m. there in London? Um, have to get you to message me back and tell me what the time is. We've changed spots tonight a little bit. Uh, we're, we're in a different spot on the campus, trying out a spot that we think might allow us to be able to operate someday from within the building. Uh, but we're still inside the truck tonight. 3.30 a.m., Robert says. <laughs> well, it's great to have you, Robert. I was having a problem with my mic right up until the very end. And I think it's going, I'm just going to check and see if it's going from here in our uh, planetarium software, Sky Safari, and it is. And is it going here from within our targeting software? Yes. And I was having just a little bit of problem with uh, getting our scope cam to work. So let's work on that just real quick. This is, first of all, this is the picture of the, sco the, the camera that's on top of the the scope looking up at the sky. So let's go up into properties, see if we can't get a little more uh, gain going on that camera and a little bit more brightness. So you can just see a little bit more of the sky. Yeah, there's a little bit. It's kind of grainy, but that's pretty much the best we can get on a pitch black night. And now look at this lower right hand side of the actual telescope. We cannot see it. Oh, you know what I bet? I bet the lens cap is still on that camera. That's what it is, I bet. Let's take that lens cap off. How about that? Ah, that'll get you every time, won't it? Crazy lens cap trick. Um, and you know, that's not a bad, um, that's not a bad view right there, is it? So there you can see the scope. Uh, we've already focused using Nina, that's a little bit different, um, a little bit different software than what we were using before, but it is. Okay, so let's go in our targeting software and get going, and then we can say a little bit more once we get going. Let's sort the list in our, in our uh, targeting software called Astro Planner. And what we're going to do is sort by visibility and altitude. And we're trying to cover some of the lesser known objects. Um, there are some galaxies. Um, the Leo triplet there, that sounds interesting, doesn't it? Uh, why don't we just start at the top and go to this one? It's uh, NGC 4217. It looks like it's uh, about 78 degrees up in the sky. So what we'll do, we're already connected the telescope. We'll just try to slew to that. And then we'll put you in the, in the scope cam so you can see on your upper left here, the upper left square, you can see how the sky is moving because you're riding up on top of the scope in that frame. And then in the lower right, you can see the actual scope itself. While that's uh, settling, just let that settle for just a second. I'm going to just make sure our cables are okay. Um, oh, yeah. I'm doing my uh, cables in a different way tonight. And I think it's working better. I, um, I found a guy who had a scope like this. And he had a different way to, to do his uh, cables. Now, let's. this is our first object so um, let's go over to sharp cap and we'll do our um, see we have to connect to our scope and then do our plate solving um, this is our first object so we'll probably be off quite a bit on this one 
because uh, all we did is basically just polar aligned. So yeah, it's saying uh, you are five degrees off. Are you sure you want to? You sure you want to be that far off? Uh, and so now what it's doing is it's comparing the sky view that it sees through the telescope with a library of stars uh, that it has uh, that, that we've loaded up into it. And so sure enough, it is it is happy with that view now. And let me just look and make sure you guys are seeing the same view. I'm also going to come over here. There's Robert. Hello, everyone else that is watching. Well, we do have six viewers, so that's pretty good for 1030 at night. Uh, if you guys use seven, in fact, now, if any of you seven would like to say hello, we're glad to have you. The The friend that you see there that's already greeted at the YouTube stream is his name is Robert or Bob. He's uh, logged on from over in London. You know, while uh, while we get going here, uh, let's let's get our live stack going. Let's start out with maybe um, I don't know 20 seconds, and let's do our gain at 100. And let's just um, maybe do um, a reset of the display histogram. And let's put our target in, which is uh, our target, remember, is NGC 4217. NGC 4217. And I think we're ready to start uh, live stacking. And, you know, um, while that's uh, starting to live stack, I'll just say a word about the posture that I take in these. You know, I, I look at myself as a fellow explorer on these things. Please don't think of me as a guide. And I kind of compare it to uh, going caving. Did you ever go caving and go into what you might call a developed cave? That's where they have all the um, electricity running. Uh, they've hooked up these beautifully colored lights. Some of the lights are red, some are blue, some are yellow, and they've got them aimed at different parts of the stalactites coming down from the ceiling. Uh, they've got it aimed at some of the water, you know, so it makes these beautiful reflection pools. And then the guy takes you from one section of the cave to another. When he, when he leaves a section, he'll turn the lights on to the next section, and he'll turn the lights off on the section we just walked through. And he'll point out all the names of things because why? He's been through the cave a thousand times before. In fact, he's probably taken a thousand groups in the last month. And so really you're on a tour and he's the guide. Well, that's that's what you get when you get somebody that's really um, familiar with the cave and a cave that's super developed. Now, contrast that with going in an, an what you might call an undeveloped cave. And an undeveloped cave there's no concrete walk. Nobody's gone in and poured these nice little staircases with handrails. Instead, it's just a bunch of muck and mud and, and rocks and formations, but there are no lights. So everybody has to have their own light and they have to work together. And I'm with you in this, in this expedition in an undeveloped cave. So think of me that way, and I think we'll be just fine. <laughs> I think this might be my 17th night out uh, with the scope, so I'm still learning a lot. Oh, we've got Frank with us. Frank, it's great to have you. Uh, boy, you are up uh, tonight. <laughs> you guys are you guys are like the fellow spelunkers for these things, and it, it really does make it special to know that there are explorers with you in the cave. Who wants to go through the cave all by yourself, right? All right, we'll do just that auto stretch here on our live stack. And we'll also do a um, reset of the color balance and an auto set. And let's try it based on these peaks. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll pull over our black level. Look at that blue. It's kind of out of, um, out of touch a little bit with us. And I... I don't know why it's got the blue turned up so high, but it did. And you can see, I think that's going to be our galaxy right there that we're looking at. So now we've got our black level in roughly the right spot. Let's bring our mids up just a little bit more, and then let's start zooming in a little bit and see what this galaxy looks like. Oh my, there are a lot of galaxies here. 
But I think this is the galaxy that we're, we're zooming in on here. Wow, and you can already see some dust lanes forming out here even, way out here, out at the edges. And then within here, you can already see some arms. Uh, this thing is beautiful. I don't know how deep we ought to go in our zoom so we don't cut something off. That's 40. Let's try going in about 50, and let's hold there for a second. So we are looking at this thing about a 45-degree angle. And look way out here. You can see some dust and soot. Then look at some of these stars here. Might be like star-forming regions in those outer arms. So what we're looking at is NGC 4217. And while we watch that stack, let's see what we can learn by going over to our planetarium software. And we're just going to put an NGC 4217 while you see that form. It says it's an 11th magnitude spiral galaxy. And it's in the constellation Canis Venatici. It's 61 million light years from uh, the galaxy that you're seeing there forming up in the, in the, on the screen, 61 million light years away to, to where the photons are landing on the mirror of the Rasa telescope that you can see tonight. Now this Rasa telescope, this is an eight inch scope. And you can see the direction that we're going here. This white part here shows you the scope and this black part on the end is the dew shield. Uh, so you can you can kind of see what we're looking at here. Let's go back and let's look at this image. Boy, that is looking beautiful. Let's try, um, let's see what happens when we bring these mids in just a little bit more and see if we can't tease a little more nebulosity out of that outer dust region. It's hard to say how far out that goes, isn't it? Look how we can see the bright core now. Uh, I guess it's uh, only about five arc minutes wide. And it's got a diameter around 96,000 light years. So that would be roughly the size of the Milky Way, huh? I believe I've heard the Milky Way is about 100,000 light years across. But uh, we can check that to be sure. They say it's type SB, like Sierra Bravo. And it, it's actually going away from us at a, at a little bit less than 1% of the speed of light. So this NGC 4217 is not the kind of thing you would see very often in a cave tour. Uh, it's just not that, not that famous, is it? It doesn't have an M number, so to speak. But wow, look at the... Let me see if I can get rid of this. And let's get rid of this. And let's just look at it for a second and appreciate. And while you're looking at it, I'm going to see if I can bring up the um, the channel on my phone. And that way, I might be able to see. Um, there's the live stream. Oh, yeah, that's the, um, the audio coming through. That's a good thing. And uh, we've got Kim with us from Australia. Kim, I can't believe you're here from all the way down in Adelaide. Midday there in Adelaide. Oh my goodness, Kim, it is so great to have you here. Your accent probably would sound uh, more similar to Robert's than mine. Oh, I'm so glad you're here, Kim. If you guys have not met Kim yet, he is our new team member with the Southern Sky in his sights. Something that we just don't have here. You know, I love this the fact that we can see all this dust here in the middle and look at it, it almost looks cloudy. Look at this outer region. Let me just make sure you guys are seeing that. Yeah, look at this outer region of, this is probably just dust and soot that's being flung. Let's zoom in a little bit tighter. Wow. What we are looking at is almost a mirror, a mirror image of our Milky Way um, except this happens to be 61 million light years away. What I think we should do is go look at this in our Sky Safari planetarium software for a second and see right here 
that's our field of view. But before we go in, let's get a sense of where we are. Look, here's the Big Dipper. And so if you were to find a Big Dipper and go away from the open dip of the Dipper and look back behind it. And so there, there's the bowl of the Big, Big Dipper and here's the handle. And right there is this NGC 4217. And look, there's the field of view that we're looking at. And look how small it is in the, wow, and then right there, oh, it's, it's, there's another galaxy right there, happens to be PGC 40, well, there's, well, how many digits is that? 4318533. But we are looking at NGC 4217 right there. It looks like there's maybe a galaxy within a galaxy. Right at the edge is a is another galaxy there. And that one is 14th magnitude. And wow, it's so tiny. Um basically edge on to very tough to see. And it's in the corner of the galaxy that we're looking at. So let's go back to where we are. So I don't know if we drop off a little bit just to make sure we're, we're covering everything. What it's basically saying is that within one of these corners, I wonder if this is it right here. You think this is it? Let's zoom in on that. Yeah, that could very well be it because it is um, it is edge on. Let's try to go into 100%. Yeah, that's about all we're going to see of that PGC thing. But that's amazing that we're catching that at 14th magnitude. You may need to bring the mids to the left more. I think YouTube compresses the video so the outer dust is harder to see. I bet you're right. Oh, look, there's one down here, too. Um, let's do that. Let's let's do what uh, Frank's um, saying here. Let's grab the grab that for a second and bring those mids over. Uh-huh. I think you're right, Frank. I think that is better. We're starting to see just a little bit more of this dust here. And look, I wonder if that's that other galaxy. Let's go back over just for a second to our to our planetarium software. Well, there's actually another galaxy here too. NGC 4217. I wonder if that's on our list. Oh, 40, 4217 is what we're looking at here. But look, this is 4226 over here. And look, we're we're supposed to go look at 4227 next, so I bet that's close. Can we uh, center on that and zoom in on that? Oh my goodness, there, there are three galaxies overlaid in that little, in that little guy. This is just a galaxy-rich part of the sky. I mean, look inside of, <laughs> look inside of our, of our field of view. We're not only seeing 42. See 4217 right here, 4217. But then there are two or three other galaxies right there. And then look, M106 is here within our field of view here too. So let's go back to the whole field. I wonder if that's M106 we're looking at. Look at this. This is such a galaxy rich part of the sky. I wonder if that's M106 up there and this. I bet this is actually 4217. Because look, if you if you look at M106 here, let's center on that. And Let's zoom in. Yeah, see, that's M106. What we wanted to go to is the middle of our frame. Let's go back over to 4217 and center on that. Now let's go back to our picture, fair and square. 
And let's go back out to see the whole image. So, so we're going to look right here in the middle. I think by bringing up our mids, we did introduce a lot of green in there. So now let's just jump. Now that we're centered, let's go to about 40% and make sure we we look in the middle again. See these these things would put us in the center. Hey, this is our object right here. This is 4217 right here. So let's zero in on him a little more. 4217. So it's a lot more edge on than what we thought. Unfortunately, our um, planetarium software does not give us an image of this. Unfortunately, we do not have a sample of this. So what we could do, while, while you're looking at that just a little more, let me jump out to a browser window and try to open up NGC 4217 and let's grab wow it's a beautiful it's a beautiful image 4217 let's look at first of all a um a more realistic look at it about this 4217 yeah so now let me get you over here to see this I found this on the web um, let's see how do I do that how do I get you to the to the web if we go here and go here and then go hmm there, does that do it? Yep. Now you're seeing that, right? Yep, Kim Kim agrees. Oh, that's a good idea, Robert, to try to rotate uh, what we're seeing in Sky Safari. But here is what our image of, of NGC 4217 should look like. And you can see, look at how there's this little um, edge on dust lane here that's blocking that. I don't know if we're going to be able to see that, but let's go back to sharp cap. Yep, we've got it. Let's let's see. You can already see a little bit of that dust lane, but let's just press our luck and go into 100 percent. Yeah, see that dust lane right there. And that's actually the dust of the galaxy that's blocking the view of the edge of the galaxy. So we've picked, you know, these are some hard targets, but that's what we're doing when we when we go with these um, targets that are not, uh, you know, on the Messier list or a little bit off the beaten trail. I'm real happy with that. Um, let's go ahead and and uh, take our um, let's go ahead and take our um, screenshot of this. So that we can put that in our targeting software. And this is NGC 4217. And then let's also come back here and save exactly a scene for the record as well. So that was 50 frames, and we were about 17 minutes exploring that thing because uh, this was a kind of an uncharted land. Like I say, it's an it's an uncharted land that we're we're going through here. So now let's go to um, make an observation, and um, down here we'll see we at first just gravitated to um, M106. But finally uh, realized NGC 4217 was edge on right in the center. And we should have known because we had plate solved and
plate solving will usually put the object right in the center. So now we're going to um, go grab NGC 4217. And you can see there's where we, we've we placed it in our uh, targeting software to be able to see the the object itself. You know what, I didn't name that. And when I don't name it, I've noticed, let's see, can I edit that? I wonder how I edit that attachment. I think I'll erase that and reattach it because I've noticed when I don't, when I don't assign it a name, 4217, it does not behave properly. Well, I did it again tonight. See, when I go back here to objects, I have to try to pick it here. And it's not really showing up correctly here. Is that it? Yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. Huh. 4226, is that what's right above it? Boy, I'm still not happy with the way this happened. Let me see if I can learn how to do this. Copy file to attachment database, NGC 4217. Boy, it still doesn't let me name it though. Why is that? Oh, I know why, I know why, because where I do that is here, add user image. And this is where I need to say NGC 4217 and pick it here. And then if I go up here and say edge on or whatever, I mean, I can put whatever word I want and then it puts our image in, which is not bad. It's not as good as their, you know, Hubble or whatever image. Well, thank you guys for letting me get started that. Robert says, that's probably the longest I've seen you on one single target. Be careful. The EA police don't check up on you. <laughs> You're right. But, uh, you know, we are on a cave expedition, an undeveloped cave. <laughs> All right. Let's go back over here to um, Sharp Cap. And uh, let's stop the live stacking. And... Uh, then let's go back to our targeting software, which is where you guys stayed anyway, and let's resort, sort the list again. And I wonder where it'll take us if we try slewing to NGC 4627. I bet it didn't move us much. Um, NGC 4627. So let's go to our planetarium program and just look. NGC 4627. Forty-six twenty-seven. Oh, it was quite a bit, quite a bit far away. Let's look and see where, where we're looking in the sky now. Still pretty much straight up. Let's go back to our planetarium software and kind of, oh, let's start our stacking first. That way we're using our time more wisely. Um, NGC 4627. And uh, we got to come over here and get our plate solve real quick. So now, once again, we're lining up with the um, library. And I've got us zoomed way out here. Way in, I mean. We were only off two hundredths of a degree that time. Uh, so I think it learned the sky very quickly, didn't it? Now you can see, see how these stars double up here? 
And that's the effect you get when the mat has moved some. And now what we're doing is we're letting one image come in. And after the one image comes in, what we'll do is we'll reset this display histogram. And then we'll start live stacking. We'll clear the last live stack. And now while that's stacking, let's go back over to our planetary software, 4627. And let's zoom in here. Wow, it does have a beautiful image of this. Let's look at the info. Oh, there's a nice audio tour. Oh, but we don't have it. Why don't we have it? Let's let's um, go back to our let's see. How do we get this? It's a narration. Um, Hmm. Would it be, um, I must have just had it muted. So that's not good. Let's try again. And let me see if I can. Huh. Oh, this is why. Let's try again. The hunting dogs. The galaxy is in a mainly blank area of the sky where it is possible to look out from the Milky Way into the wonders of truly deep space. The constellation has few stars, but dozens of external galaxies may be viewed here. For oh, sorry. NGC 4631 is a bright edge on galaxy in the constellation Canis Venatici, the hunting dogs. The galaxy is in a mainly blank area of the sky, where it is possible to look out from the Milky Way into the wonders of truly deep space. The constellation has few stars, but dozens of external galaxies may be viewed here. 4631 is an attractive object with a high surface brightness. Visible in a 60 mm refractor, it is a line of mottled light and faint details are visible along the whole body of the object in a 150 mm telescope. Larger scopes reveal a small galaxy beside 4631 and the pair looks like a hockey stick with a puck nearby. At least Canadian observers say this. Just north of the galaxy is Cor Coroli, the bright star of the hunting dogs. The name means the heart of Charles, and it is said the star shone with great brightness to celebrate the return from exile of the English king Charles II. The star is a very easy double, with subtle and attractive colors for small telescopes. Who knew that we were going to um, learn so much here? A hockey stick! How about that? Uh, this is a, a really nice image, isn't it? I had no idea that this little nondescript NGC character would be so interesting. Look at all of that detail. My goodness. Look at these mottled dust clouds here. And I guess this is probably star forming region. And what was this little other galaxy that was beside it? What did he say? Um, we're looking at 4631, and some people call it the whale galaxy. And the little the little galaxy out of the side of it is 4627. That's the companion. And this thing was evidently discovered by William Herschel in 1787. Uh, and some people call it the herring galaxy. I think that's a great name. That was given in uh, Deep Sky Magazine in 1995. And then uh, Whale Galaxy occurred in the Supernova Search Chart series by Thompson and Brian. Uh, so this is pretty much edge on. It has a magnitude of 9.8. Uh, it, uh, it is at 24 million light years away. And it says the center of this 4631 contains a region of intense star formation. So many supernovae have exploded in the center of NGC 4631 that they're generating a super wind of ionized hydrogen gas that's blowing out of the plane of the galaxy. 
And this super wind has produced a giant diffuse corona of hot X-ray emitting gas around the whole galaxy. Wow, that's almost like haunting to think about. Uh, just to see where you are in the sky, let's kind of get oriented real quick. Um, let's see, here is Polaris. So that you can kind of see the north star. But wow, um, here's the horizon. There's Arcturus. So it's getting up toward the zenith. And if you were going to try to find this in the sky, if you could find this bright star Arcturus and and go up toward the zenith from that. And there's the zenith. In other words, that's like straight up overhead. If you just point your finger straight up overhead, that's what you'd see. I love the fact that we didn't know that this was going to be the whale galaxy at all. And we also didn't know it's called the hockey stick or the herring galaxy. Uh, now, by the way, while we're here, one other thing I think we ought to zoom in on, this might be the star. And I don't know this for sure, but we probably should should go look at... Remember it said there was a double star that we could resolve? Oh, look, there. There's the double star that we could resolve. It said easily in a scope this size. Well, we've got some work to do. Over in our planetarium software, we got to make some notes about this baby. Look, under the name of it, let's edit this and let's say... This thing is known as the Whale Galaxy. And it's also known as the Herring Galaxy. And also known as the Hockey Stick Galaxy. That's crazy. Who would have imagined that you'd name a, a scientific, you know, a Hockey Stick Galaxy? All right, and let's do, uh, let's make our quick observation here. Let's make an observation. And let's say that, um, why are we not, why are we not see whale galaxy? Oh, it's because we hadn't highlighted it. Um, 46.27. Is that what we're looking at? 46.27? It is, isn't it? 40, yeah, 46.27. Make observation. Why is it not letting me... Oh, I know. It's, I'm on attachments. Uh, so... We loved this. Uh, it uh, honestly did look like a herring. Um, and a whale. But the hockey stick is a stretch. We could see the um, dust um, lanes, the uh, star forming regions, and the um, modeling effect, uh, and the companion galaxy, which was named um, 40, let's see, 4631 is the edge on. 4627. 4627 is the companion. That's crazy. So 4627 that we're looking at here is the companion. <laughs> Look, so so really, this is not all of this stuff. This is the hockey puck for the hockey stick. 
4627 is the the puck, the hockey puck of the hockey stick. Right. Kim has pointed that out. Uh, right. 4631. Okay. So when we take our picture here back in sharp cap, let's do our, um, let's do our, our picture here and show that companion as a center. And this is NGC 4627. Isn't it interesting that 4631, isn't that an interesting star right there? Right there. I wonder if that's just optically aligned. Probably is. Probably is just optically in the way of the galaxy. Um, but that is interesting that there's a star right there probably optically in the way. Let's go look at our, yeah, see, look at these stars here. And let's back out of this for a second and center on it and then zoom in and click on that star. Well, yeah, so that's that Gaia star with that great big long name. And if we do a, an info on it, it's um, at a distance, 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 distance. Where's the distance? Um, why are we not seeing? Boy, I'm not seeing the distance. Is anybody else? I'm not seeing the distance here in Sky Safari for this big, long Gaia, Gaia star. Maybe we don't have the distance calculated for it. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, let's go back here now and save this as, as seen. You know, I got to say, this... Um, this is a great image of the whale galaxy that we should also grab while we're here just for that. Um, let's make sure we're not missing anything. Let's do an image of this as well, and we'll call it NGC 4631 as well. Forty-six thirty-one. yeah. NGC 4631. And we'll make sure we put that it's on this date because we might already have an image of it. If it's not here in the target list, I think that means we have imaged it before. So let's stop the live stacking now. And uh, let's go back over to the targeting software and let's attach this image of um, 4627. So see, that's gonna show us that little faint galaxy there. And while we're at it here, let's just make that our, because they don't even give us a user image of it, add a user image of NGC 4627. And we'll say companion to uh, that's going to be too much. Um, but as long as we have a word there, I notice it lets us pick it. NGC 4627. Um, boy, it's not, not showing it here for us, though, is it? But anyway, the other thing I wanted to do is let's 
Oh, I know why, because of that. Let's, uh, let's search for 4631 and add it to this targeting list tonight. NGC 4631. And let's add this image of NGC 4631 from tonight's date. And um, let's just put, um, why are we not seeing the display of the images? There must be some display images. Huh. For some reason, it stopped showing the image here, isn't it? Oh, well, I'm not going to worry about it now, but you can see it's not showing it anymore. I wonder if this is it. Click here to sh Yeah, there we go. So let's pick the wow image. And now that'll forever, that'll forever be a memory for us. Wow, that's really a nice. Okay, let's do our uh, sort again. And uh, go back up at the top. So what we did, we... We didn't have 4631 in our target list tonight. And so we didn't see it originally, but we had 4627, the companion. <laughs> so that shows what an expedition we're on. Now we're ready for the, um, for the, what, the 4217? Is that the next one? Uh, okay, let's slew to that. Slewing to coordinates. And... Uh, Slewing complete. 4217. And let's go over to sharp cap and NGC 4217. And let's get our camera controls back here for a second. And let's try to plate solve for that. While we're plate solving, I'll just tell you a word about this new uh, sinking this to coordinates. New slewing, location slewing we have. It's off of the road. You guys that have tuned in before, you know that we're typically up on a service road on our property. Now we've come down kind of more in the center of our property and it's a nice protected area back behind our prayer center and atrium. And what I really like about this location is it is um, within easy reach of our building. And what I've done is I've done the math on what I can stretch to with a, with a top-notch USB cable uh, that's an active, active USB. And uh, what I like about the fact is we will now be able to run that 130 foot USB cable from within the inside of the building. And I'll no longer have to image from the truck, especially on those cold nights. Like I don't have the engine running in the truck right now. Um, we'll be able to image with our computer inside the building in the lower level, which we'll is work right by the window in our lower level, which by the way is a dining area. And uh, there are a lot of windows down there. And we'll be able to use a large screen. And yes, this is where we're going to set up with the new setup, uh, Robert. It is. And we'll be able to have a large, like a 42-inch monitor there. Um, we'll, we'll be able to have, I think, a lot more. Um, we can stand up, you know, and stretch a lot easier rather than image from within the truck. And during the cold winter or... I guess, aversely, the hot summer, we will no longer have to um, run the truck at all. So I'm kind of liking that. Um, let's do this color balance again. Look how it's turning up the blue light tonight. That's just so strange. I'm going to pull it back down because I don't think it should be. And we're back in that same area of the sky where we were before, interestingly, aren't we? We're back. Remember when we were originally starting and we started with like 42. What did we start with? Was 40. 
was 4217 the first target that we did? It was. <laughs> so we're back doing the first target where we started, huh? So, sorry, we need to go to 3628. Whew, boy, I just got the... Uh, I just got so interested in that whale deal that I forgot all about this. Let's go now to 3628, which is the Leo triplet. Slewing to coordinates. And NGC 3628. NGC. Pure East. Oh, we flipped NGC 3628. It is a spiral galaxy in the constellation of Leo. It forms a conspicuous group with M65 and M66, the Leo triplet. So you guys are going to have to help me out here as to which is which. Let's go. Let's, um, well, let's first get our... Slewing complete. The slewing is complete. So let's go to... NGC 3628, NGC 3628 here, and now let's plate solve here. Sinking to coordinates. A quarter of a degree slewing off. To co slewing complete. We were probably a quarter of a degree off because we did flip, but that's not bad, is it, to just be a quarter of a degree? Okay, Robert says we'll recognize the hamburger and the cigar. This sounds like we're in a bar or something, Robert. You got me all flustered here now. Um, okay, we we can reset this. And let's clear the live stack. And so we're live stacking. While that's getting started, let's go over here and... Let's center on this new thing, which is this Leo triplet. And let's zoom in a little bit. So what you're saying, I bet, Robert, is this must be the hamburger and the cigar. Let's get rid of this scope panel there. So we're going to look at the one that does not look like a spiral and a, this must be the cigar. That's what you're saying, huh? NGC 3628. Wow, this is pretty cool. It's got a, it's another one of those ones with the dust lane across the middle. Okay, so let's go find it here. Um, first... Get rid of that green tone just for a second because that sort of looks ugly. Then let's zoom in to about right there it is, huh? Wow. Look at that. Now to see the Leo triplet, that would be a nice image of the Leo triplet, wouldn't it? Cigar is M82. So this must be M82 is what you're saying, right, Frank? This must be M82, and then this one must be... Let's memorize these so we can... So we know what's in the Leo triplet. Are you sure it's M82? Wouldn't it be M66, M65? Let's look here. Wouldn't the Leo triplet be... Oh, you're saying the cigar is the M82 galaxy. So you're saying this might be shaped like a cigar, but it's not the cigar. So I think what uh, perhaps Robert was saying is, is it reminds him again of a cigar. How about that? This one? So the cigar-shaped one is M65. So let's go back. So this is M65. And this must be then M66. So let's memorize these. So in the Leo triplet, 
M66 is going to look like the spiral. How can we remember that? And M65 is going to look, kind of remind us of a cigar. But this one is not an M, it's not on the Messier list, so Messier must have missed this. Frank is saying correct. Um, NGC 3628, then, is this guy that has this unique dust lane here. And there is no audio file in this, but so see if we can review. This is M M66. This is M65. And this is NGC 3628. It's the faintest and the most difficult in the group. Just faint enough to have escaped Messier's telescope. Its discovery was left to William Herschel, who cataloged it as H, well, you would have known, he would have named it after himself, HV8. He must have been drinking an orange juice, the tomato juice that day, following its discovery on April 8, April 8, 1784. Robert says, yes, it does remind me of a cigar. And Oh, so Frank, you're saying that NGC 3628 is known commonly as the Hamburger Galaxy. Ah, so that's what, Robert, that's what you were saying. You were saying a while ago, you'll recognize the fact that it looks like a hamburger. Gotcha. NGC 3628 is seen edge on with apparent dimensions of 14 minutes by three and, and a change minutes. A conspicuous broad equatorial band of dark dust clouds obscures the galaxy's bright central region and hides most of the bright young stars in its spiral arms. Huh. The dust band is obviously deformed in the outer regions of the galaxy. The reason for this deformation is evidently the gravitational interaction with its two neighbors, M65 and M66. It's about 35 million light years away, has a tidal tail approximately 300,000 light years long. The tidal tail also suggests that NGC 3628 is interacting gravitationally with the other spiral galaxies in the Leo triplet. Uh, the center of NGC 3628 emits variable X-ray radiation, perhaps indicating the presence of a massive black hole. Nice. In addition, spectroscopic analysis reveals that the stars orbit the galaxy in the opposite direction of its gas. It is surmised that a recent galactic mergers generated this kind of dynamics. Wow. So this thing is a really messed up place. Uh, let's, let's first of all do another color balance here just to check. We did improve a little bit, didn't we? We no longer are getting that weird blue thing. So let's kind of expose for those spiral regions for a minute. Oh man, we're getting the tail now. Look, this is the 300,000 light year tail out the edge. Let's expose for that tail a little bit more. Wow, look out here. Al. There's a lot more dust that it's throwing out. And let's zoom in a little more now. It does look like a squished hamburger, doesn't it? Let's get rid of this for a minute and get rid of this so you can just enjoy for a minute the nature of this. That also gives us a cool view of the Leo triplet. While we're here, I'm just going to grab this picture of the Leo triplet. And save that while I'm at it, because I don't think we're going to beat that. Leo triplet. Triplet. Leo triplet. But let's be adventurous, and let's go in a little bit tighter on this. Look at that tail. Wow, that's cool, isn't it? Being flung out there into space. You know, if we expose any more, we're going to miss some of that tail. Maybe not. Maybe this is a pretty good, 
pretty good balance of it. Wow, that's really cool. So what I'm going to do now is grab this whole section as our screenshot of it. And this is called NGC 3628. Boy, just to pick these random out of the, I mean, literally, what, what I'm doing to get our targeting list, just so you guys know, I'm saying get rid of all the Messier objects because, you know, on our Messier Marathon, we imaged all those. Show us the, col uh, is it col Collins? That doesn't sound right. Uh, but the, the one that starts with C, remind me of what that is list. And then show us the 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 most known NGC list that's not on the Messier list. And that's how we're getting these targets. And I had no idea this thing would be this impressive when it just found it on the loose NGC list, you know, like, like it is. But I will forever remember this NGC 3628 as the squished hamburger. It looks like it was put in the little um, machine that you see, and when they're making those, um, uh, you know, like in grills, when when they're sub sub sandwich. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let me get see if I can get that back. I wanted to do this. And um, so we'll we'll have that saved exactly as seen. And then let's stop the live stacking. NGC 3628. Let's go back over to our targeting software and make an observation of this. And under the general tab say, wow, it really does remind us of a squished hamburger. Maybe a pressed in the grill press at the sub shop. And uh, we could see the um, burger portion blocking the core and the um, tail of dust being flung out. And then let's go here. Oh, attachments, sorry. We'll get this straight. Uh, NGC 3628. Look at that. I remember that number for now. There's that cool picture there. Then let's go back out here. And under NGC 3628, let's say add a user image and go grab our brand new hamburger press image. And let's say burger just because if we add even one word there, then it shows it. Uh, I'm going to save this. And I'm really happy with this, man. I I think for us to have gotten these things just wild cards, I mean, we have no idea. This is the unexplored cave. And we're, we're just charting through this cave together. We are now one hour in. And let's kind of review... We've done four objects, so we're averaging 15 minutes an object. You are right, Robert. We are going to get accused of the bad police on the EAA sections. Now, tell me what this C list is. You guys, can you help me remember this? Let's say, um, if I say look up by ID, does it show me? No. Where does it show me all these? Caldwell. That's what I was trying to think of a while ago. Caldwell. So this is probably NGC 2775, and it's also known as Caldwell 48. Slewing to coordinates. NGC 2775. NGC. Slewing complete. Too. Wow. 
Wow. So this is NGC 2775 in our unexplored cave. You know, you can see how dark it is out there. I mean, the only, to coordinates. the only light Slewing, we have slewing complete is that red light that's aimed at the telescope. Uh, but there is no moon at all. This is a nice night for observing. The only thing is I'm starting to get a little bit cold in here. I am going to have to start this engine. Look, we're only uh, five hundredths of a degree off. I love this mount. This is a Skywatcher. Um, GC2775. Are we ready to live stack? I guess it's settled down, right? Boy, there's not very much visible there, is there? This is going to be a trick if we can find this thing, because right now, uh, while that's starting to stack, Let's go over here and find this. Um, so now we're in our planetarium software. And look, we're, we're in between southwest and west. So if we start at the horizon and go up, there's Regulus. And then over here to the right is the twin Gemini stars of Castor and Pollux. I don't know, I guess that's the way you find this thing, huh? Uh, right there is where our field of view is. This little frame, it, it represents the field of view for a Rasa 8 with a, a ZWOASI 2600MC Pro um, Astro Camera. And we're cooling this to about 8 degrees Celsius tonight, tonight, and it's beginning to feel like eight degrees Celsius in inside this truck. Kim had to go. My goodness, thanks so much for being with us from Australia today. How exciting, Kim. Thanks for, for being with us. Can you imagine the time zones we had with Robert over in the middle of the night in London and Kim way down in Adelaide? That just sounds cool. We had Adelaide, Australia on. Uh, so this is what we're looking at. NGC 2775. So it's right in the middle of our field of view. So let's go over and see if we can pull this thing out. Oh my goodness, what's happened here? What in the world has happened? Let's do a reset here. And let's do a reset here. And an auto stretch. And a color stretch. I mean, a color reset and a color, color balance. I'm going to pull these blues down because I don't know why it's... And let's pull our blacks over here. What was the big difference that caused us to be so out of whack on this part of the sky? Um, so there's the black level right around there somewhere. We're imaging at 20-second subframes with the gain set on 100. And you can see right there is our splotch that we're, we're trying to figure out. And we're already at 75%. This is a fairly small smudge here. <laughs> it is a small smudge. But you know, if we go back to uh, Sky Safari, it is small in our frame. <laughs> Look at that. That thing is tiny. And then we get right here. And let's see what kind of information we have on it. No audio. It's a spiral galaxy in Cancer. So it's a cancerous spiral galaxy. Uh, it's a particular interest for a variety of reasons. Who knew? It's 60 million light years away. It's a peculiar blend of spiral galaxy with a smooth bulge in the center. Classified as SABRS 
NGC 2775 is similar in structure to galaxies like NGC 2841 and NGC 488, which tells me nothing. Uh, we're cave explorers. Coincident neutral and molecular hydrogen rings surround its core. The spiral pattern starts very abruptly outside of this region, showing great complexity, especially at higher resolutions. Clumped regions of star formation confined to this ring start the tightly wound spiral arms. It's been a host of five supernova explosions in the past 30 years, so this is a galaxy to keep an eye on for sure. Look at some of these other little galaxies. This is the galaxy group. <laughs> okay, let's go back to Sharp Cap and see what we can pull out. And, oh my goodness, we're not going to get very much, I fear. <laughs> oh, we're not going to get very much. I don't think. But we've only stacked for four minutes, so let's give it a little more time. Let's do another um, color balance here. So notice when we auto color balance, it, it turns the blues way up. And I don't know why it's doing that. Let, let's leave the blues up for a minute just to see if, if it's correct. And then let's pull these in. Tell you what, with a Rasa telescope, see, here's the thing. This is our actual field of view. Look at that. That's our field of view. I mean, we, Rasas have a very wide field, uh, comparatively speaking. And I apologize. This this is a very small galaxy. I guess I, I don't have to apologize. I mean, the truth is it's very small. But maybe, look, we're starting to see maybe some, some spiral arms here, do you think, with our live stacking? So this is an example of, and look, this could be, no, surely it's not another galaxy there. The other thing is, I wonder, at this 100%, I wonder if... Our focus could be just a little bit sharper also. And maybe that would that would help us pull in some more content here. But look, you can already start seeing. Let's go back for a second and look at the Sky Safari. I mean, really, even in the Sky Safari image, it's a little bit of a bright central core surrounded by this smudge here. This is NGC 2775. NGC 2775. Let me duck out to the web for a second. And I'm just going to say NGC 2775. And Yeah, I think there are plenty of other people that are seeing it the way we are here. If we go to, um, like here's a cloudy night's image. Oh yeah, that that's no longer um, no longer visible. Here's one um, from Astro Bin. Yeah. So let me um, let me show you what I found here. I wonder if I go here. If I go Control Alt Six. Yeah, that works. Control Alt Six is the thing that takes you guys over to the browser. So there's NGC 2775. You can see it, it does have a bright core. And then in this guy's image, does it tell us what he used to image this? He used a 1600 monochrome. And it was a um, 130 millimeter 
uh, refractor uh, triplet. So apochromatic, isn't that C48, Curtis says. Hi, Curtis. Yes, it's the same as C48. Uh, it's just classified with two different numbers. Man, that's great you recognize that, Curtis. That's impressive. This guy did, um, to get this image, he did, look at this. He did 20 minutes of blue, 20 minutes of green, 20, 60 minutes of luminance. <laughs> this guy imaged for two hours. He did 20 minutes of red. So this is two hours of, of collecting image, and this is through an, a triplet refractor, 130 millimeter refractor. So a very nice, you know, APO triplet image. And after two hours, this is what he got. So you know what? I'm not going to feel the least bit bad about this. Uh, this is nine minutes with no monochrome camera. You know, monochrome is much more sensitive than a color camera. Uh, so I am not going to feel bad about this, even though I wish we could see a little more detail, but that's it. That's all we're going to get. And this is just an example of how a lot of people believe that you pick the target based on the telescope that you have. But I'm not that way. I want to know what the sky really looks like. Curtis says he likes the Caldwell object. So that's why you knew this by C48. Well, I'm going to grab a um, screenshot of this. And boy, I'm just going to grab it, you know, blowing up. And we're going to call it NGC. Which one was it? I don't have this one learned yet. NGC 2775. NGC 2775. I'm with you, Chris. I think that's easier to remember as Caldwell 48. NGC 2775. And we're going to make our observation of it. And here under general, we're going to say, okay, I admit, we were uh, sort of like pushing it to to uh, image this in a wide field rasa. Uh, but, but we still could see it, just not all the, not quite all the detail that a two hour monochrome refractor astrophotographer would see. Uh, let's go here under attachments and attach our file such as it is in GC 2775. You know, it's it's basically a smudge. We, we basically image the smudge. <laughs> I mean, I am just not going to lie. NGC 2077. But you know, that's part of cave exploring. Smudge. So there's our smudge, NGC 2775. But that's part of this idea of, of exploring the undeveloped cave. All right, let's go back to sharp cap for a second and uh, save as seen. And let's say goodbye to NGC 2775 for now. But it is kind of cool that we were starting to get the arms after just nine minutes or so. And then let's go back to our... Uh, next, we're going to go to uh, Caldwell 61. It's uh, the Antennae Galaxy, otherwise known as NGC 4039. So here we go. Slewing to coordinates. And um, it's NGC 4039. Mm -hmm. 
Slewing complete. NGC 4039. Oh my, this is a fun, uh, this is a fun object. Okay, let's go back over to sharp cap here. And um, you know what, we're zoomed in at 100%. Sinking to coordinates. Five hundredths of a degree. Complete. I love Skywatcher mounts. Uh, Curtis says thumbs up for more Caldwell objects. You should explore some more Caldwell objects. I think you're right. The re the refractor probably has similar focal length. Um, I think you're right. It had to do with the data time and post processing helps too. You are right. You are right. Curtis, thanks for pointing that out. It is all of the post-processing in Photoshop. Uh, let's get our name down. Is it? Is, did we get it already? NGC 27? No. NGC 4039. NGC 4039. And livestock. Clear. While that's stacking, let's go over here to our um, Sky Safari. Um, planetarium program. So now we're looking due south. And we're not super high up above the horizon, are we? Just for orientation, here's Spica on uh, the left. So if you think about going up, uh, not quite as high as Spica, and here's the field of view of the scope. So, 4039. Oh my goodness, that is so unique, isn't it? Look how unique that is! What you've got are some colliding galaxies here. Oh, good. This has an audio tour. Uh, let's uh, let you listen to this. This is a fainter of the two galaxies involved in the ring-tailed galaxy. NGC 4039 is the harder-to-see member of the two galaxies in the small constellation of Corvus the Crow. NGC 4038 is the other half of the celestial duo. Larger telescopes, above 300 millimeters in size, are needed to see much of the action here. It is clear the two galaxies are merging or colliding, and ghost-like may go straight through one another, given the passage of enough time. Well, that was short and sweet, wasn't it? That is a tiny object, too, but I love it that it's so unique. Um, we're getting a lot of blue here. I think I'm going to turn down the blue again. Why is it giving us so much blue? So, you know, you guys that are watching this, just curious about our software, this, this is called SharpCap Pro, and it uses a, a process called live stacking, which is sort of like taking a bunch of pictures and stacking them one on top of each other. So we've taken seven pictures so far, and each picture is 20 seconds long. And by stacking on top, we can start to drop out some of the noise in the image and instead start to emphasize the actual star shapes. And the software does all that for us automatically interestingly enough. Uh, so down here on the bottom, what we do is we kind of work with this thing called a histogram, which is a fancy way of uh, accenting different portions of the image. Like if I, if I drop out the whites, we lose some of the star glow. So we keep the whites over here. Uh, if we're too far to the right here, we don't get our sky black enough with our black level. 
And then the mids, this is where we really start teasing out some of the some of the nebulosity. If you get too much nebulosity, you start getting that green glow of this color bar right here. So what let's do now is let's zoom in. So see, there they are. Antennae. Isn't that interesting? They look like two little maple, you know those little antennae, the little helicopters that are attached to the maple trees? Look at that. That object has been up here my entire life. I have walked this planet. I have looked up in the sky my entire life. I have looked up in this part of the sky before. And I've, I've, you know, admired this part of the sky. But look, I've just always seen sky. And I've never had a scope or software that would let me see this. This is so interesting to me that it's like this hidden Easter egg up there waiting to be discovered. You can see why Messier didn't catalog it. It's so dim and it's so tiny that where he was observing in Paris or wherever, he just couldn't see it. It was so dark. Now we're at 50%. Let's just zoom in at 66. And look how these galaxies are interacting. So the tidal force of gravity of the one galaxy is starting to mess up with the tidal force of the other one. Look how we're starting to see little stars in these regions of the, I guess you call those star forming regions. We're starting to see little stars there. And see, look, you can see them here too. You can see the little, the little brighter parts where there are stars. Let's look at our info here. Look at that, the way those arms. Jim Misty, I I have heard of him before. People like use his name with like a sense of awe because of the way he creates these beautiful images. Um, it looks like there are actually two galaxies here. 4038, 4038 and 4039, so they've they each have their own name, see? Let's do this. Let's go back to this for a second. Huh, so wouldn't you say that the one that is more diffuse is, thir is 4039, and the one that's more defined is 38? And the kind of... Uh, Help us all the more. 4039 has a trail. Look at these stars here. One, two, three, four, five, six stars pointing at it. And they're kind of along this. They might even be part of that tail that it's throwing out like a comet. So 4039 has the tail. So now let's go back to our real-time image. So now you're looking at it real-time. So this is the one that's more defined. So this is 4038 over here, and this is 4039. Let's back off a little bit so we can see a little more of the tail. We're not seeing a lot of the tail. Or, or those, those stars that were in that tail, or I guess they are right here, aren't they? No? Hmm. Interesting, huh? We're not seeing that. We're not seeing these as much. Let's back off a little bit. Yeah, those are part of that tail. So let's use this as the indicator. There are three stars in a row here that are on the 4039 side, but it's just the one that's more diffuse. That's what we can see. 
the one that's more diffuse. And look, here are those three stars. We're going to assume. And look, here are these three stars. That's, that's the three. Look, they're pretty much equal, equally bright. These. And you can see that our fields don't always match up based on the way our equatorial mount is laying off in one direction or another. So this is 4038 and 4039. We are getting more definition, aren't we? This is after eight minutes. I'm going to grab the screenshot. I don't know how far out these tails we're going to see. Zoom in a bit more, maybe also maybe brighten it up. The combined object is C61. Robert says, the birds have started the dawn course here, and I'm struggling to keep my eyes open, so I'm going to say goodnight. We'll watch the rest on the replay. Robert, you're a champion. Thanks so much for spending this time with us. So kind. Uh, what a great champion guy. Uh, so the combined object is Caldwell 61. But yes, they are two separate galaxies passing through each other. So you're saying, Curtis, uh, brighten it up a little more. Yeah, we're, we just sort of get a general sky glow when we do that, too, I'm afraid. But I don't mind doing that. But it just starts brightening the whole sky, see. I don't know if, if we come off of that peak just a little bit. It'll make the dark sky darker. Yeah, you're right. When we make the dark sky darker, then it does help us accentuate the arms a little bit. And you start to see a little bit more of this, but we would just need more time. I'm afraid. We are starting to see it, though. I don't know if it shows up in YouTube, but we're starting to see this, and we're also starting to see more fluff out here. But, uh, boy, I don't think we have, you know, two hours to do this. So let's just grab our screenshot here. And this is... So you're saying... Let's see, 4039 is what we started out imaging. So let's call it that, NGC4039. And then let's also save a scene. And then on our 4039, four, let's... Um, make observation, go to general and say, two galaxies colliding, NGC 4039 is the one with more definition. Um, the entire object is called well Curtis said, Caldwell 61. Curtis says, yes, see it better. Clifford, wow, from Sydney. Clifford, we are so impressed that you're logging on from Australia. Bless you. We just had London on as well. And Robert, you can see in the trail of comments, he just went to sleep in London. Poor guy. He stayed up with us the whole time here. Um... Let's go to attachments and attach this 4039, NGC 4039. That's actually not bad. Wow. So let's go here and let's also do uh, add user image. And put in NGC 4039 and say colliding. Just any word that we add here, it puts our image there. 
I like that. Now, while we're here, let's add NGC4038. And let's sort the list and see if it puts 4038 beside 4039. And there's something else we can do here. We can, in Astro Planner here, we can associate these somewhere, associate selected objects. And look, C61, it did, it did tell us, oh, the combined object is C61, I see, gotcha. It's got the C61 by 4039, but I don't doubt but what you're not right. Look, Antenna Galaxy 1 and Antenna Galaxy 2. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, now we're going to go for the Valentine 6946 or Caldwell 12. NGC 6946. NGC 6946. And let's uh, plate solve for this. GC6946. Sinking to coordinates. Just eight. Slewing to slewing complete. NGC6946. See how that doubles up those stars first. You gotta wait till another image comes in so the scope is settled. Settle down. And this green bar graph here in the lower right shows the image coming in. Now we can start live stacking. NGC 6946. NGC, NGC 6946, fireworks galaxy, how interesting. Let's center on that. Let's kind of see where we are in the sky, get, get our connection with the sky, northeast and north. This is again over toward that light pollution area. But really the light pollution is not, yeah, it's still kind of, it probably ends, most of the light pollution is ending over here um, where the Cephus is. This is real close to Aldebaran. NGC 6946. There's no audio on this. It's a rather nearby spiral galaxy on the border between the constellations Cephus and Cygnus. It's both spectacular and dim and called the fireworks galaxies for reasons which will become obvious. Wow. So this is Jim Misty again. Discovered by William Herschel, September 9, 1798. At one time, it was suspected to be an outlying member of the local group of, like, the Milky Way. Uh, in other words, the Milky Way galaxy travels with a bunch of other galaxies, and the, the galaxies we're traveling with are called the local group. The galaxy is faint but obvious. Its diffuse oval halo brightening considerably toward the center NGC 6946 is a nebulous object in a well-populated star field and forms a nice pair with the star-rich open cluster NGC 6939, which is at 39 minutes northwest of it. So that'll be about a third of a degree, right? Uh, the beautiful face on spiral spans nearly 40,000 light years across. So what would that be about? A little less than half the size of the Milky Way. Uh, is seen through a field of foreground stars from our Milky Way galaxy. So the stars we'll see are not part of this galaxy. They're like just, they happen to be in front of it as we're viewing it. Uh, NGC 6946 appears quite close to the galactic plane, 
and is highly obscured by interstellar matter in the Milky Way. How about that? So our own galaxy's clouds are blocking the view of this galaxy. It's kind of a metaphor of the way our uh, Earth atmosphere blocks our view sometimes of the, the night sky. It's kind of metaphorical. At a distance of 10 million light years, a galaxy relatively nearby, but not a member of the Milky Way's local group after all. Nine supernovae, and it names them, have been observed in it since, or as of March 2009, uh, with this number of supernovae, NGC 6946 has three more than follow-ups M61 and M83 with six each. So this would make it one of the more popular galaxies for supernovae that we know of. Why is this galaxy so active? NGC 6946 is undergoing a tremendous burst of star formation with no obvious cause. In many cases, spirals light up when interacting with another galaxy, but NGC 6946 appears relatively isolated in space. A suggested explanation for the high star formation rate is the recent accretion of many primordial low mass neutral hydrogen clouds from the surrounding region. So in other words, it's picking up clouds as we go. Fireworks galaxy, right, Curtis. Uh, neat. With your field of view, you might also end up with NG6939 as well. It's an open cluster. You know what? They just said that, as a matter of fact. Um, up, up here somewhere that makes a nice pair. Here it is. It makes a nice pair with 69... 6939. So good call, Curtis. You are on the ball. All right, so let's look at it one more time in our field of view. So there's that 6939 open cluster. That is not a real obvious open cluster. Okay, let's go back over to SharpCap now and see what we got. Let's first of all uh, do our color balancing. You know what I think it's doing this over here in the North Sky for is because it's seeing the Louisville uh, light pollution and it's trying to make some sense out of that light pollution. So now let's do a, um, a reset and an auto stretch here. Let's do that color balance one more time. Let's pull this over to here. And right here is our object. Wow, it's tiny. While that's coming in, let's see if we can find the open cluster. Let's go back to auto first. That's too wide, isn't it? I wonder if this is the open cluster right here. So let's do this. Let's go into 16 and let's start looking over here for that. Yeah, look, it's beautiful. Look at that nice cluster. So this open cluster is NGC 6939. NGC 69. Oh, that's so pretty. It almost looks like something Christmassy to me. NGC 6939. Wow. That's so pretty. Let's do a color balance again of these. And then let's hold our shift key down and try to get this black level correct. Waiting for a second for that black level to settle in. Right about there, I think. We want it to be able to show us all those different colors. Isn't that amazing? Now that's a 40%. Tell you what let's do, just for a second. Let's get rid of all this stuff here. And let's just look at that open cluster for a minute. 
And let's just admire that. Is that not beautiful? Just take a look at that. Just think that's amazing. Let's do a, uh, let's go ahead and capture our screenshot of this. And this is called NGC 6939. NGC 6939. Okay, now let's go back out to auto again. And let's, this time, let's zoom in on the um, galaxy. So we'll get recentered here. Wow, that's super cool. Look at the arms. That's awesome. Oh, am I showing Sky Safari? I am so sorry. That was so sad. Well, you know what I'm going to do? Um, first, I'm going to go over and show the galaxy again, the uh, cluster again, because... That was so nice. Let's go back out to about 33. I'm sorry. That was so impolite. Isn't this the coolest cluster ever? It looks like Christmas time to me. It just looks like we're down in, you know, downtown Paris or something. And these are the Christmas lights. <laughs> we missed it all. <laughs> no, you're catching it now, Curtis. I came back and got you. Okay, so now you've seen the um, you've seen the cluster. Now let's go back and now let's get the galaxy. So we're gonna zoom in on the galaxy now. Get centered back up. This galaxy is so tiny. You know what? It's 1248. Um, that means I'm already past my two hours. I'm so sorry. We'll stop with this. Um, we'll stop with this image because I try to keep these just to two hours. Uh, look at these arms. Wow. Let's, let's go back over here to uh, Sky Safari for a second. And maybe under the info, it'll show us. Yeah, look at those wild arms throwing all that stuff out in the sky. Isn't that crazy? And look, we're getting those. Look at that. We're seeing those arms after just how much? 10 minutes. At just 10 minutes of imaging, we're seeing those amazing arms. Let's look at our live stack again and make sure that we're getting everything that we can out of this. We'll just pull that a little bit more up there so we can see it as we go. Let's do our, you know, we're, we're suffering a little bit because it is, the, it is in the light polluted area of the sky. And look how it's giving us so much blue. It's kind of an artificial blue, I think. Yeah. Now let's move this back over to there. Oh, yeah. That blue is messing us up. I'm going to hold my shift key down and get a little bit closer. Yeah, now we ought to be able to bring these in some. Look at that. So this is a star-forming, supernovae-releasing fireworks galaxy.
Curtis says, don't worry if the sky is not perfectly black. I'm with you, Curtis. This looks a lot better than what we were doing a while ago. Okay, I'm going to do our um, image of this. Boy, we pretty much have to get all the way out to like that. This is NGC 6946, isn't it? NGC 6946, right? Yeah. NGC... 6946. Wow. You know, um, this is amazing to me that these objects are up there hiding in the night sky for us, waiting to be found. And I'm so thankful that you guys chose to came, come along with us tonight. You know, you could have done anything with your evening. You could have um, been watching reruns on Netflix. You could have, I'm sure, found some kind of cat video to watch on YouTube. But instead, you went on an expedition with us and you found with us NGC 6946, the fireworks galaxy, and we're grateful for it. Uh, I'm going to go back over to our astral planner here and make an observation uh, and say, wow, saw the star forming arms and also picked up the companion uh, open cluster NGC um, 6939 uh, 6939 okay then we'll go here to attachments we'll add the picture of NGC 6946. And then we'll go back here and we'll say attach add user image. NGC 6946. Um, Dim, but active, something like that. So it's kind of dim, the object that we say, but that's just a measure of the fact that we only stayed on it for 10 minutes. All right, boy, gang, thanks a lot for spending these uh, this time with us tonight. We're so thankful that you chose to to be here with us at Emerald Hill Skies. Um, look for this video to go up on YouTube and uh, also look for future uh, live streams. Uh, oh yeah, check for new supernovae. Good point, Curtis. Uh, C12, got it. Uh, look for new streams. We'll try to do these about one day a week. We try to catch unless clouds don't allow. And then uh, uh, we also put up sometimes the shorter little skylets. We call them Emerald Hill Sky skylets. So if you would, if you like this kind of content, go to Emerald Hill Sky's channel. That's probably where you're watching this if you're watching the live stream. And go ahead and click subscribe. And if you want, you could click on the bell so you'll be notified when we do new live streams or uh, when we do little, those little skylets. Uh, you can also go to emeraldhillskies.com if you want. And there's a blank there where you can sign up to be notified uh, in our email list. And all we do is use the email list to notify you when we're going to do a live stream. We try to give you about 48 hours, 48 hours notice if we can of when we'll do one. And then we also uh, prepare the live stream in advance. So you might see it sometime if you're subscribed and you click on notifications, you might see that it'll, it'll say like coming or something and let you know that it's coming. 
uh, thanks a lot for being a part of this. And we look forward to seeing you again in the skies above Emerald Hills on the outskirts of Louisville, Kentucky. My name's Doug, and thanks for spending this uh, part of your Friday evening.